Join me in our opening prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage so that we never lose hope by always bringing our prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. We welcome you to First United Methodist Church of Florence, Alabama. Know that God is merciful. He offers the cleansing gift of forgiveness. Let's stand and sing together, God of grace and God of glory. Unite together in historic confession of our Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed, which you can find printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church here in Florence, Alabama. I'm Dale Cohen, senior pastor, and it's my privilege to welcome you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather in God's house to worship together. I want to encourage everybody here in the sanctuary to complete the connection card, the little tear-off section on the end of the worship guide, and here in just a few moments when the offering is collected, you can drop your completed card in there. I also want to welcome those of you who are watching us online. We are so appreciative that you have decided to join us in worship today. Uh, some of you live, some of you will watch it at a later time, uh, but the Holy Spirit knows no bounds, and so we gather together in one spirit, the Holy Spirit that binds us together as God's people, and we're so glad that you're with us. If you would, please go to our website, fumcflow.org, and click on the registration link there. Or you can also, there, if you're watching on Facebook, um, just put in the comment section that you're with us. And for any of us, either here or online, uh, if there's any way that our church can be of assistance to you, please reach out and let us know, um, because we would love to be in prayer for you as well as in ministry with you in whatever way uh, will best uh, suit your need. Uh, today is Communion Sunday, and just a quick reminder, anyone who desires to receive the sacrament in our church uh, is welcome to come forward when it's offered. You don't have to be a member of the church. You don't have to be a member of any church. Uh, we just want to make this gift of God's grace available to you. Now, uh, there's a lot going on this week in our community. School starts tomorrow for Florence City Schools and throughout the county and the area. Uh, other schools are starting. And so how many of you, and we're going to include college, how many of you will be starting school this week or in the next couple of weeks? Raise your hand. Okay. Yes, I see. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Yes, and you're starting a new job, too. So, okay. Uh, what we want you to do is we want you all to come forward. Yep, come on. And I'm going to offer a prayer of blessing for the new school year. Yeah, y'all come on up. Come on, Kurt. You're, you're not that shy. Come on. <laughs> Come on. All right. And allow me to offer this prayer. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, we praise you for the gift of curiosity and learning. May all these students, their teachers and administrators, have a clear sense of your love. May they feel your presence throughout the school year. Guide their choices, their quest for knowledge, and all their relationships. Use their successes and failures as opportunities to grow in understanding who you would have them to be. Continue to shape them so that they may walk in the way of Christ, grow strong in the Spirit's love for all people, and know the complete joy of life in you. In the name of Christ, our great teacher, we pray. Amen. All right, and Miss Mariana has something she'd like to share with y'all. Sorry, big kids, nothing for you. <laughs> the, the invoice for classes are in the mail. <laughs> All right, let's congratulate them on starting a new year. All right, y'all can go have a seat now. Thank you. I want to share a couple of congregational notes uh, with you. 
Um, uh, we offer our condolences to Jay and Christy Lovelace upon the death of Jay's father, Jimmy Lovelace, and to Will Lovelace and Megan Dye upon the death of their grandfather. Please keep this family in your prayers. And um, uh, we recognized the Olsons last week, but we have their flower up here. But we can add to that this week. Congratulations to Mary Catherine and Davis Brewer on the birth of their son, Franklin James Brewer. Also, congratulations to his grandparents, Kathy Waddell and David and Beth Brewer. And additional congratulations to his great-grandfather, Joe Dill. And we celebrate all this new life in our congregation. Uh, we're continuing our summer sermon series called Summer Playlist. And we have a guest preacher today, and I'm so excited that Katie Dobbins is here to share God's Word with us. Katie grew up in this congregation, um, and although she's uh, had a lot of adventures since she left our congregation, uh, she's always stayed connected to us. She was in the Peace Corps for a while. Uh, she's been on staff um, at another church uh, doing ministry there, and uh, Last year, she began her studies at the Candler School of Theology in Atlanta, and she is a candidate for ordained ministry in the United Methodist Church, and we're very proud of that heritage coming out of our congregation. And so Katie is going to be bringing the message for us today, and she's using an Andy Grammer song from her playlist, and I'll get this right, The Good Things is... The good parts, I messed it up again. Uh, I wasn't familiar with the song, but I listened to it, and I said, oh, this is going to be a great sermon. So, uh, and I've heard the sermon, and just spoiler alert, it's a great sermon. <laughs> so uh, I know you're looking forward to it. Our Wednesday evening activities resume this week after our little summer break. Uh, programming from nursery through adults uh, begins at 6 p.m., uh, would love for you to join us. We'll begin serving dinner about 5 p.m. Uh, and serve until about 5.50. Uh, if you'd like to reserve uh, a meal, you can do so on your connection card or call the church office by noon tomorrow. Uh, we have one adult class uh, this coming week, and I will be doing a presentation on why Christian nationalism is an oxymoron. And Paul Baird said he would have a dictionary here on Wednesday night uh, if anybody needs to know what an oxymoron is. Um, but uh, the subtext is um, why Jesus uh, supports the separation of church and state. And um, I look forward to sharing that with you. Uh, special thanks to Debbie Nelson and a whole crew of folks who gathered a couple of times this week and helped clean and organize the kitchen, and it looks amazing, uh, but they tell me, oh, we're not through yet. We've still got more to do, and uh, we're so grateful for them, uh, and a lot of them are part of our Quinonia Cafe teams. We have several teams that help with that, and um, uh, that's the, the, the snacks and coffee that we serve uh, between worship services, and so a lot of those folks uh, we're involved in this, and we're so grateful uh, for all that they do, not just the kitchen, but the Quinonia Cafe and, and all the other things as well. Which, by the way, we got a lot of great people around here, and um, if you're wondering who the great people are, just pull out a mirror and look, because <laughs> everybody, everybody does so much around here, and I'm so grateful uh, for the many ways that you serve. Uh, we're going to be feeding the UNA band. Uh, they're in band camp. Uh, and on the 14th, uh, that's next week, Wednesday, uh, we're going to be serving them lunch. Uh, and it's an opportunity for them to come into a cool place and cool off and eat a meal before they head back out into the heat. If you can help with that, uh, either as a volunteer to help serve, uh, or if you'd like to contribute to the cost of the meal, uh, you can contact uh, Terry Buchanan. Also, uh, don't forget your Honduras Christmas shoe boxes. Uh, we have 182 shoe boxes uh, that we anticipate being filled, and that is amazing. 
Uh, and uh, so all of those boxes have already been given away. If you're filling a box, uh, we need it by September 8th, but really the sooner the better. And if you didn't get a chance, or if you want another opportunity to help with this project, um, we will be shipping these boxes to Honduras um, in September, and it costs $4 a box to ship. And so if you would like to participate in the costs of that, uh, also you can see Terry Buchanan. Um, yesterday, the Norton Musselman class provided 152 meals for the Shoals Community Soup Kitchen. Uh, this is an increase, uh, but the reason it's an increase is because the need in our community is growing. And I'm so grateful for all of you who provided uh, food and who helped um, get the meal ready to deliver uh, to First Presbyterian Church where it was served. Um, again, it's just another symbol of, of the beauty of this congregation, uh, how you always reach out uh, when there's a need, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, and I'm grateful for your gifts, and as we prepare to receive our offering, I'm going to invite Calvin to come forward and offer a prayer of consecration. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of this church and for your church as a whole. We thank you for each member in this congregation who uses their spiritual gifts to bless others. We thank you for the rich fellowship that we enjoy with another, but also with you. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to each and every one of us. And this morning, as we return a portion of our blessings back to you, we only ask that it be used along with the service of each of us to bless others who hunger for connection with you. For it's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen.
If you would, join me in your bulletins for the invitation to Holy Communion, as well as the confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Psalms, Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before you. Against you, you alone have I sinned and do what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You're, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing spirit. The word of the Lord. Good morning. In 2018, Andy Grammer created a podcast called The Good Parts Podcast. He wanted to create a space where he could have conversations that involved exploration of inspiration, love, money, death, and faith, and everything in between. He wanted to create a space so that he could have long form, deeper, more meaningful conversations with his friends and his peers. The same year, the same time, he released an album, also named The Good Parts, with a song, also called The Good Parts. <laughs> this song was the theme song for this podcast. And though it may not be a radio hit, I think that there was great wisdom that came from this song. Sorry if I seem impatient I'm not a fan of pleasantries See I get bored with the weather and what's in the news The topics we all hide beneath Could not care less about your day job Gossip or ordinary stress See every relationship I've ever loved Starts when someone says Show me where it hurts And give me something real And leave me to the part of you That never really heals And say the words that burn when they leave your mouth You tell me your story But 
don't leave the good parts out. Andy Grammer says that the good parts are the parts where we get to show each other a little bit of our souls. We get to share a little bit about who we are, ask questions that maybe make people uncomfortable, ask questions that maybe make us a little uncomfortable, but that that's the good part of us and of each other and of relationships. Some of the questions that he asks in this podcast are things like, what happens after we die? Or what are things that your parents did great? And what are some things that maybe your parents didn't do great? Or why are we here? And it's fascinating to listen to the episodes because the guests on the podcast signed up to be there. They signed up to be asked these questions. And yet you can hear the uncomfortable giggle that they get when they get asked questions like this. Leslie Odom Odom Jr. of Hamilton fame, when he is on his episode, um, he gets asked about the life after death part, and you hear him giggle and he goes, yeah, you cannot ask that backstage at an award show. So if you can't ask it backstage at an award show, when can you ask it? Where are the places in our world that you can ask questions like this or have conversations about parenting that are genuine and deep and real and vulnerable? Where can you have the conversations about life's purpose and things that are greater than you? I think that there are places in our culture and society that have done a really good job with curating those spaces and those environments. Things like 12-step groups and support groups. Things like talk therapy. Or, if you're like me, the hallways and classrooms of a seminary. They are quick to ask questions after a lecture or a reading or a television show. We're pretty quick to fall into these kinds of conversations. But you know, I don't see it happening too often in other places. One place I have been asked plenty of uncomfortable questions is in a children's ministry. In my 10 years in children's ministry, I got asked some doozies over the years. It never fails every time you teach about creation story, especially if you use a book or a video. There's always one child that says, where are the dinosaurs? never fails. You get interesting questions if a bug gets squished in Sunday school class about, Miss Katie, is that bug going to heaven? Of course, of course it is. I'm not sure that there's a reference Bible verse to, to back me up on this, but I'm sure Jesus is on board. And, you know, we get a very interesting question around December every year of Miss Katie, what is a virgin? (laughs) Uncomfortable questions are not things that I have been a stranger to. But there's something in adults where we, it's almost like we think we grow out of the questions. It's almost like we think that we should already have all of the questions answered. There aren't many spaces where adults are asking these kinds of questions or having these kinds of discussions? Is it because we're uninterested in the discussions? I don't think so. I think film and TV and books would tell you that there are lots of things that are still on the table to be discussed, though those may seem like they're being discussed at a distance and not with other people. Is it that we're incapable of having those conversations at a certain age? I definitely don't think that's true. I think scripture tells us that we were built to have conversations like this, that God put it in us. So is it that we're just out of the habit? We're just out of practice of asking these questions? Is it because it makes people uncomfortable? Or it makes you uncomfortable? I will tell you there is a, 
a person who was never too afraid to make people uncomfortable. That was John Wesley. The founder of Methodism was fairly notorious for being direct and articulate. And he did not back down from uncomfortable questions. I've included a list of questions in our bulletin that John Wesley and his peers, when they were in Oxford, they had created this club where they studied together. They studied scripture. They studied what they were studying in school. They did service together. They had accountability in all these different ways. And these are people who ended up helping to create and lead the movement of Methodism and the church worldwide for years. These people, these men, created a space where not only was it okay to ask questions of yourself and others, but it was expected. Now, I don't know if you guys have read the questions that are in there, but some of them are doozies. Um, you have questions like, uh, did the Bible live in me today? Am I a slave to dress, friends, work, or habit? Um, is there anyone whom I fear, dislike, disown, criticize, hold a resentment toward, or disregard? And if so, what am I doing about it? Can you imagine if we required everybody in all small groups to answer those questions together every time? And yet that's what these, these people did. They chose, they made the decision to ask each other the uncomfortable questions, to hold each other accountable, to get into that deep conversation. And those deep conversations, they created something that was it existed outside of the room that they were in. It continued past their own lives, and now we're all standing here in a church that says Methodist on the front porch. So what gave John Wesley the gall to think that this was something that you could do with people? Well, it probably helped that Jesus did it. You look in the book of John, and Jesus meets a woman at the well. And at that woman at the well, he introduces himself and he presents the living water. And after she has accepted being in the conversation, he starts telling her about her. It's not particularly nice things. It's not particularly mean either. But he spoke truth, and he spoke truth to her in a way that allowed her to be embodied with the sanctifying grace of Christ. This redeeming love all came from a conversation that was probably really uncomfortable, and it would have been really easy to be offended and to write Jesus off. And yet, for some reason, she stays in the conversation. And it allows her to be not only in relationship with Jesus, but then in relationship with the Christian community. It gives her a whole new life, all because Jesus spoke truth to her. In our scripture reading today, Psalm 51 is an individual lament. It's a lament where one person writes it about a particular sinful experience or hardship. In this case, King David writes it after his sin against and with Bathsheba. Now, I have a feeling that King David was probably um, very secure in his position in the world, having just been handed a kingdom by God. And yet, the entire first section of this psalm is David lifting up God and God's glory in this, uh, I don't know, beautiful way. He lifts up God's glory. He recognizes God's position in the world. 
And he recognizes his own position as lesser than God. It's an ego check for King David, which was probably important for him. And then you go on through the scripture and he confesses. We just did a confession here as a group. This confession of his failing and his humanity and his sinfulness leads to restoration and forgiveness and cleansing. I don't know that we do lament very well as a society, as a capital C, all of us church. I think it's uncomfortable. I think that it requires vulnerability. It also, lament is not something that is meant to be done alone. Lament is a communal act. It is meant to be a place where we fall apart, fall into community, and then build each other up into the body of Christ. That is what lament is. That is what King David is doing, a man after God's own heart. Are we lamenting when things are hard? Are we lamenting when bad things happen? Are we being vulnerable and honest with each other? Are there places to do that? Are you creating spaces to do that? We are about to embark on a very divisive year in our country, in our world. It would be so easy in our culture, and it is so easy in our culture, to be divisive and for honest conversations to stop because they're hard. And to prioritize right over righteous. We do it all the time. We see it all the time. And yet we today here confessed as a body to be able to take part in communion, this universal open act that we as a body of believers believe is open to everyone. And whether I am in my right place with God in that moment. We believe as a community that when I walk up and take communion, that even if maybe I don't show up, that God shows up. And it's just as important that when I show up and God shows up, that we show up together. These are the things that make a community. These are the things that make a church. We could all just go home and read our Bibles and stay in bed. But would the world be any better? Would we be any better? These are the good parts. These are the God parts. Thank you. Amen and amen. I invite you at this time to turn to page 13 in your hymnal. And we will join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed to us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, risen. Christ Christ will will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence as children of God, let us pray together. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. I invite those who are going to assist to come forward at this time. And as they do, I want to share with you that the way we receive the sacrament here is... Terry and I will be down here at the front uh, rail, communion rail, and you'll exit by the center aisle, come forward, watch your step on the carpet, um, and when you come forward, we'll tear off a piece of bread, place it in your hand, and then you take the bread and dip it lightly in the cup of juice and consume both at the same time. If for any reason you're uncomfortable with that or if you need gluten-free, we have these individual communion sets Uh, The wafer is in the small section on the bottom, and the juice is up on top. We don't want any barriers to the sacrament. Somebody will be standing here uh, at the center um, with these, and just feel free to take one. If you'd like to pause at the altar and spend some time in prayer, by all means, please do so. Um, This is God's gracious gift of love for every one of us, and we celebrate that today.
God of the body of Christ, he died for you. Sandra, the body of Christ, he died for you.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May we be thankful and mindful every day for the joy and confidence we have as children of God.